So every once in a while, we get some truly amazing new hardware in the CRT realm that uh, really can change the game for a lot of old TVs and specifically consumer grade TVs in America that did not come with RGB and sync support natively. Of course, I'm talking about is this little lovely device. Check it out by Sundar. Use it your own risk, right? So this is a pre-built RGB MUX kit and it's not all the way completed but it just needs a little solder on here and then the connection point. This is a Sony KV35 V36 and its chassis is upgradable to RGB and right now it's simply running in composite to prove that it works uh, and this CRT has never ever been serviced. So before I actually get to the installation of this awesome Sunthar kit, we're going to need to restore this whole set and make sure it's working good because nothing would be worse than to install this kit and then have a simple problem show up that we could have prevented by doing some maintenance so the customer who owns this set would like it to be fully restored and then the MUX kit installed. So let's get started by ripping this CRT apart, seeing what makes it tick, checking out its condition, and restoring it. So let's take a first look here at this Sony KV35 V36. Again, it is running right now with Turbo Graphics, and I've just got it sent through in composite. This does have the button board up top for power, channel, volume, input, and setup, which is just a menu control. And then on the front, you simply have a single input down here uh, for actually video line two, but check it out. This one actually has S video. So you don't just have composite video up front. You have S video two, which is a nice touch that wasn't normally done on this uh, KV set very often. I haven't seen many with S video on the front. And we also have this amazing remote. This is the RMY136, which you will need to use to get into the service menu. But these remotes are pretty readily available and can be found on eBay. And as you see, this one does work. Now this tube is gigantic. It of course is curved on a single side since it has that Sony Trinitron tube inside of it. There is stereo speakers, which would be in this area, one on each side. And then kind of the last thing I want to do is look at the back for a second. You have the embossed Sony logo. This particular set is from June of 1998, and there's the model number, KV35V36. Uh, let's look down here at our input area. Again, we have quite a few inputs and then outputs for running in and out RF signals. And then kind of the same deal, we have outs for composite video here, and then Sony's S-Link. You can hook up to this. But all we have on the back is a input for composite and then another dual input here with S-Video available or composite video. And that's the one I've been using for the demonstration. Definitely has some dust. So I'm excited to see how much mess there is inside of this amazing large set. This thing had a ton of lag screws and other screws holding it in place. Let's remove this back piece of plastic and expose the inside of this thing probably since 1998. I doubt it's been open since then. Let's see what kind of glorious things we have here waiting to be unearthed. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at that first off inside. Oh, big boy right there. Lots of dust. Right in there, definitely need, needs a cleaning. All right, let's check this out. Look at this. Wow. So first off, these are the sound system speakers. Look at that. It's like a swirling effect. Gosh, the speakers are aimed this way. And then somehow the sound is actually, what, diverted a little bit through this front? Or maybe just comes out the side mostly? This is a weird sound system. Then we have our neck board right here and our dirty tube and down here hmm this is a WA board 
So that looks like it's connected to this, which could be velocity modulation or convergence controls. Uh, either way, that's interesting. That's not something you normally would see on every set that Sony made. There's our basic input board, which will be bundled down there. Oh, of course, see, like these big CRTs always have stuff like this, like a wedge that was undoubtedly like, yeah, like right here, most likely, has fallen off. And down in there, not a big deal, but definitely it's time for this set to be taken care of. The chassis down here has done pretty well. You know, we got our main board here, our input board, which we can pull this out and actually isolate our main board. And our power supply is over here, so we don't even have to worry about them being in the same board. It's actually a nice design for a consumer set. And if we look down here at the yoke, look, we have an extra degaussing coil around it. And then same thing, look at this, we got this strapped big degaussing coil set up here that's hooked up to the back of the tube. Tube number, let's see, A89LJT81X is our Sony Trinitron tube right there. Now before I actually do discharge the set, I'm going to go ahead and service this neck board and this little WA board. Uh, we're going to recap it, check it out, and uh, reflow some solder on there too. That way I can service these two boards and then I can put them back in, do a quick test to make sure everything's okay. One of the things I've been really enjoying about checking out this particular CRT for the first time has been kind of the attention to detail for documentation Sony had at this time in the late 90s. Check it out, like the speakers here were tagged June 1998, but even better than like that. I have an actual label over here I didn't notice earlier on the tube itself from June 8th, 1998, which is extremely cool. I've never seen that narrowed down to an exact date. So, um, realistically, you probably could have used this information from this serial number, this production date, and this is probably like the tube type, and found this exact tube and like the information about when it was produced uh, in Sony's data archives, if they've kept up with that end of it. But that's really cool and just a, um, not something that I noticed Sony do on all their sets. I apologize for the background noise. I'm outside and it's a lovely day and people are doing their yard work. But I was able to fully restore this board, this neck board. You can tell it's been cleaned, recapped, solder reflowed. And very same thing with this WA board down here. I was able to remove it, completely rebuild it. Same thing as the power, or I'm sorry, the neck board and the power supply down here. All three of those boards have been done. And then once I have this tested, and hopefully everything will go okay, I'm set up over here to run a test. Uh, we'll send the signal in, hopefully the screen will turn on, and if it does, we'll let it run for a second, and then we'll power it back down and remove the main board and get to work on the more important board, the deflection board in there. Let's see what happens when I press power on the remote for the first time. Everything sounds normal on here. Got to keep an eye and make sure I didn't screw anything up. Okay, good. <laughs> Just popped on the image there. I was worried for a second. All right, let's uh, press go here on a game. Who cares what it is as long as it runs. And at the same time, we'll let the chassis get warmed up there. Oh, it looks good. Okay, we got all the colors. Nothing's looking bad. And back here, everything looks okay. Give it the old smoke test. Make sure nothing was smoking. Don't see any smoke. All right, I think we're safe. We're just going to let it run here and monitor things. But yeah, it's looking good. That's how it's supposed to look. And step one, which is to repair and restore those three boards finished I think we're good to go now let's see if there's gonna actually be a zap from that anode cap all right let's try to get this anode cap out of here I've already got all the other boards disconnected and ready to remove the only thing left is this now 
This one's gonna be a little bit too hard for me to push in, so I'm gonna use the uh, discharge tool, which is hit hit over here to the main ground loop. Now the odds of this having an actual spark are pretty low because it's a Sony. I don't know. Let's see if I can get under there and if we see anything. Whoop. All right. Try again. No, nothing. See, Sony. Sony loved to make their CRTs safer. So they all have a resistor that bleeds out and, and it basically self discharges on a good majority of their CRTs. So you get no spark. There you go. Safe to remove. Take it down in the shop. Get to work. No one got hurt today. So here we have the A board, which is our main board. And before we install our Sunthar RGB kit, I need to get in here and do some maintenance on this. We're going to reflow solder on some points, specifically transformers and the flyback and um, this large IC, the hot. We'll do that one. And I'm going to get in here and change these deflection capacitors. And the fun thing about some of these TVs, like this one, is it actually tells you on the board what areas are for deflection. So if we look here closely, we've got our vertical deflection will be in this block right here, right here where my thumb is. This is pin cushion stuff from here where my thumb is up. This is an audio amp. We don't need to worry about that. And volume control, we don't need to worry about that. Or the tuner, uh, the horizontal deflection. So we're gonna do horizontal, vertical, pin amp on this board. And it looks like that will be about 30 plus or minus a few caps. So I'm going to remove all these, create the cap kit, and I'll show you what the board looks like when all these caps have magically been removed. Well, here we have a cleaned out board. There's that horizontal deflection area. All the caps have been removed. Same thing with the vertical deflection area right next to that. And don't forget to check in between these parts back here because there was one vertical deflect or horizontal deflection capacitor down in there, and those tend to be hidden. So make sure you check. Now over in this area, again, these every single one of these is audio, and even where you see them tied together, that just means this is sharing a ground for these last two like filter capacitors on audio amp. Since we're not worried about audio, we're going straight to the pin amp, which is another deflection characteristic and control. And the good thing about this area is this is also connected to the area where all the voltage comes into this board from the main board or main power supply. So that's some of the first stuff it's hitting. So we're replacing the capacitors that are coming right off that power, which is vital. Everything else should be fine in here to not really worry about. I'm going to go ahead now and install the new capacitors. And uh, here's this full kit. As you can see, we've got horizontal, vertical deflection, and then pin. So I'm going to install these. And then we'll start looking at this RGB kit. I have everything done as far as recapping. And I did mark the caps I changed. And I completely QC'd this by double checking everything. And when I look under here, I have completely cleaned this board up. And basically I've gotten it ready for us to install the RGB mod. And I do reflow solder on some points here too, like the flyback transformer, any of these other transformers, inductors, large. There's the horizontal out, for example. I reflow that, the large connectors, large resistors. Here's another transformer. Anything like that generally gets a good reflow. But what I need to do is prep the board and install the RGB mod, believe it or not. And that's going to come into this area of the board around one of these chips. I'm not exactly sure which, so thankfully I have this amazing guide. Uh, first off, here's the kit that I have from Sunthar. And it's sector.sunthar.com. There will be a link to that in the description of this video. 
But this was sent pre-made for this particular CRT, so all the resistors are already installed. And we do have a diode that's installed. And um, that means we've also got like every color has a resistor coming into it or coming where it goes through. And then it's got a 75 ohms to ground resistor installed in this nice board. And so I need to finish soldering up this board and then I'm going to run conductors over here to spots. And I also need to run, um, I also need to remove three surface mounted resistors. Now let's look up here. This is the actual website that Sunthar has and the guide for the double A 2D chassis. That is the CRT we're working on. It has this chassis. So we can RGB mod this. I'm going to skip through some of this stuff. This is the diagram of the MUX we're using, or the setup where this is our SCART connector. These are the resistors I was telling you about. There's that one diode. All we need to do is run the conductors and remove these three resistors for the most part from what I can tell. So that's given us this diagram here from the service manual. Shows us which three resistors to remove. There they are, right there. And then it looks like we need to add a diode to blanking, so we may need to do this next. Okay. And then we'll install RGB conductors. So we just need to finish that up, and it's literally those three conductors. Wait, there's got to be a spot for audio. Oh, there's blanking. So we have to connect the blanking down here. We have to connect blanking to this point. And then we do red, green and, green, and blue there. And that's really all the conductors we should have to run. And then we have to add this diode here. Looks like. So let's figure that out. All right, I found R1123 and the rest of them. You have to get in here in between these two chips. And check it out. It's in this cluster. But this is red, R1123. And then we have to go to this one where my fingernail is. That is the green resistor. And then we go up past the empty spot, up past the, and then this one is the blue resistor right there. And right there, one, 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 three, three, looks like, or one, three, one. I can't tell the exact number on the board, but that's the one we need to remove. So I'll just heat up my iron and remove these. And then I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. And uh, this is our spot for blanking down here. So that's where we'll install that. And since these are going to be the conductors afterwards, I will go ahead and add fresh solder to those points. If you look at the top side, this is the diode over here. Um, R706, we took out that end, inserted that diode with the black end of the diode going down towards that hole. According to those instructions, so there it is, R067. That should take care of the blanking signals. Now all that's left is I need to go in and run all the conductors to the red, green, and blue over here. Blanking, what else? We need ground, audio, left and right, and then sync. Well, I've installed the modification kit according to the directions. And I'm gonna walk you through what I did a little bit, show you things. First off, this is the finished MUX kit that is specific to this chassis from Sunthar. And then what I had to do is I had to run the conductors that come out of that and connect them to the board here. Now you saw me do the modification a little bit ago, but what I've got connected here is I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna zoom in. And first over here, the orange. Uh, the orange is an additional ground, so that's just a ground point. Here we have blue, green, and red all connected. This brown is our blanking cable. Then that's going to follow around and go over to the head. Then I've split the others off. This is a common ground, so I've actually connected it just up here. I mean, theoretically, these grounds should be able to go to anywhere as long as they're good ground points. And then... Over here, I've got sync coming to this composite, and then this is all on like input three. So sync to the composite spot right there. There's a right or left audio, the white cable. 
Gray is right audio, and then that's the audio ground is that purple. Those were factory. Anything else was in there was done with the factory. And then those all come together over here to the mucks. So, I don't know. Is it going to work? We're going to take it upstairs and reinstall it in the tube and see what happens. Well, I'm back here in the testing area. Of course, somebody's cutting their grass right now. And no, no, don't get too excited. I've not tried RGB yet. Honestly, what I have running here is just, I've installed everything back and I was doing a quick check on the composite input here or just input number one. Now, hopefully we can engage RGB in a second and it will switch over, but I just wanted to show you that it's definitely working normally after all the work we did. It's just, I wanted to test that now. Let's see what happens when I put SCART into this thing. All right, let's see what happens here. It's on RF just to prove it's working. Should be working on video two is the front. Uh, I think it's video three. Now I'm going to turn it on. SCART hooked up. And let's see. Uh, no, not working. <laughs> Uh, of course, right? This is uh, there's something wrong here. I don't know what it is. I followed that guide, but uh, I'll try to take a look at things, see if I've got something pinched or pushed over. But yeah, we ain't getting it so far. Okay, thankfully I found this guide, which was a little clearer and very very similar to our TV today. So what I've done is the only thing I've changed is I moved everything from that board and wired it up according to this diagram which is main sync right here to go on the main Y. So this should be line one is what I'm thinking now. Uh, we have another ground. No, that's the same one from earlier. This is where the ground is for audio. And uh, down in there, I've got left and right audio on that connection board. So let's put all this back together because everything else looks good. And uh, hopefully we'll get some RGB into this. Okay, it's hard to see, but we are on RF right now. Let's switch over. Video one, main input, I believe. Let's just turn it on, it's hooked up. Let's see what happens. Hmm, awesome. This is a uh, sync issue, I think. And uh, yeah, you see how it's just like doing weird stuff. Wow, not working. Well, hey everybody, I had to take a night off and relax and actually look at things from a better perspective, which helped me figure out what the heck I was doing wrong. Uh, I had this little guy assembled wrong, and some of you may have seen this earlier and were just laughing at me the whole time saying, I can't wait to see Steve's face when he figures this out. You see this receptacle? I had it soldered on this side the top side with the resistors and by doing that it reverse wired everything so put it on this side and I tell you what that was the only problem everything else was done right and uh, so let's let me show you what happens when you actually get this screen right you get this installed right and let's see if RGB finally works all right everything's plugged up super Famicom Look at this, straight RGB through SCART to the adapter head, fed into the chassis there, and I don't have any other tricks going on. You can see nothing in the input board back there, and check it out, folks. It's magnificent, glorious RGB here. Your favorite screen, well, my favorite screen, <laughs> the Super Metroid starting screen shows you so much good stuff check out the fat 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 scan lines this looks glorious and it was definitely well worth all that frustration so the next thing i need to do is mount the scart input and i'm going to mount this into the shell over here down in this spot right beside here, I already cut it out. 
with a Dremel and then some files and then I hand drilled those holes with some drill bits. Let me show you the other side. Hopefully this will work out good. This is one of the more frustrating things to do, or I mean difficult things to figure exactly is where to mount the scart head. And yeah, it doesn't look very pretty. So let's hopefully, let's hopefully get this together and see how that fits in there. All right, we have liftoff, friends. This CRT is now RGB modded, which you are seeing now. And you can't see my reflection. I'm gonna get some footage later on when it gets darker, but I'm just blown away with how this looks. Look at that. Let's watch this amazing entrance here for a second. And I've got the back reinstalled. And if you look down here, I'm gonna show you. There's our scarred input. Wow. And that's coming straight from Super Famicom. And that straight in to the tube. No switches needed with the Mux mod. This is so amazing. All right, so check it out. I'm just going with my awesome uh, Mel Gibson style Lethal Weapon 3 haircut. And uh, we'll round things up on this RGB mod. So again, this RGB Mux kit is not like the other RGB mods I've done in the past where you have to put in a mechanical switch. This requires no switch. You just put the signal right in there with the SCART cable, and once you turn it on, the picture actually shows up on every input. It shows up on even RF. But then when you turn it off, uh, or unplug the SCART cable, you get the normal functionality of the CRT. So that's really cool. You do get dual functionality where you're not losing anything technically. So that's all good. I really enjoyed doing this mod and getting it done. Um, uh, one thing, I'm sorry that it's like, springtime here in america and everybody around me is cutting their grass all the time during the day so there's a lot of background noise probably in this video and so i hope you're able to get past that and enjoy the modification that we did pull off and um i will tell you that this crt is so awesome it's just it blows me away the level of quality i was able to get from the adjusted picture at the end of this thing and it's going to be impossible for you to really film that unfortunately uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to do something even cooler. I've decided to take this CRT with me to the Retro World Expo this year in 2024. So that's the Retro World Expo in Connecticut. And I will have a presentation and a booth. <laughs> I will have a presentation and a booth at the Retro World Expo. And at that expo, I will bring the CRT. I'll have RGB in it. You can come see it for yourself, see how awesome it is. I'm not sure it will stay there the whole time because the client who owns the thing is actually going to be taking it from there. But it'll at least be there one day. And then I will also be at a booth with Retro RGB. And Bob and I will be working to RGB modify another set that he actually has live in the booth. So if you want to learn more about RGB mods and just see them happening real life in person. There's not going to be a better opportunity than this probably in 2024 and uh, It's really not going to cost you anything extra if you're going to this uh, Convention already you can come by and watch this happen. This kit can be used with many different CRTs So I would recommend that you check out the link to Sunthar stuff in the description for the video here and that way you can get more information as you need it. And again, please come and see us at the booth in the Retro World Expo. Um, I'll also have a presentation there, so that'll be pretty unique. And you'll get to see that awesome CRT in person. All right, so there are a couple of things I want to do. First off, I want to say a huge thank you to Scott, Patreon member Scott. He uh, is the one who owns this CRT and pretty much sponsored this whole video. Uh, special thank you to him. And also, I want to let you know that I'm going to include a slideshow uh, with this video here at the end following this message that has pictures of this entire restoration from the restoration documentation that I include with really any restoration. So this will be beneficial to you if you need more details or have questions about the mod further and want to take a look at some high resolution photos. You can watch that, pause it when you need, 
And uh, so that's going to be going here for the next little bit. And on that note, we will finish this video out finally. Thanks again for watching. See you guys next time.